in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Friends, I am very happy to connect with you once again as we begin third Sunday of Advent. This Sunday readings invites us to joyfully wait for the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord always that we may meet the light of Christ as we are going to celebrate the Christmas. Let us then recall to our mind our own shortcomings and failures and ask God's pardon and forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who see how your people faithfully await the feast of our Lord's nativity. Enable us, we pray, to attain the joys of so great a salvation and to celebrate them always with the solemn worship and glad rejoicing. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me, he has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation and he has covered me with the robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom takes himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial song. My soul shall exult in my God. My soul shall exult in my God. My soul magnifies the Lord. And my spirit rejoices in God, my Saviour. For he has looked with favour on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on, all generations will call me blessed. My soul shall exult in my God. For the Mighty One has done great things for me and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. My soul shall exalt in my God. 
the Lord has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy. My soul shall exalt in my God. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench us the Spirit, do not despise the words of prophets, but test everything, hold fast to what is good, abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely, and may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do this. The word of the Lord. I have to be to God. when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent me. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, Why then are you baptizing, if you are, not, you are neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize you with water. Among you stands one who do not know, than one who is coming after me, I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. 
This took place in Bethany, across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus. A drama teacher was instructing his students about acting. He was trying to get them to understand the idea that they convey the message in their faces. When they were doing different scenes in a play, they had to project whatever that scene is on their face. He used the example of heaven and hell. Their faces should look very different if they are talking about heaven or if they are talking about hell. He said to the students, when you are talking about heaven, your faces should light up. Your smiles should radiate. And your eyes should look to the skies. People should be able to see heaven on your faces. He said, when you are talking about hell, well, your normal faces will do. Friends, the story enlightens us to understand the third Sunday Advent readings. Let there be joy and light on our face on this Sunday. The readings make us think about the meaning of joyful waiting. Now, I would like to ask a question. Are there any Bible stories that contain the sense of joyful waiting? Yes. The story of Moses can be one good example of containing such a sense of joyful waiting. The people of Israel being enslaved in Egypt, they were waiting to be freed from their enemies. The story of Noah is also another good example. When the whole world was covered by water, he and his family Members had to wait inside the ark until they could land on dry ground. Mary is magnificent in which she explains, My soul glorifies the Lord. My spirit finds joy in God my Savior. It is also rightly the responsorial psalm today. It is a great joyful waiting for Mary to be the mother of God despite the confusion and her unknown future. She was able to say yes to the Lord. That yes brought joy to the world. And today's three readings contain the message of joyful waiting. In the first reading, the prophet Isaiah tells us the joyful waiting of the people of Israel as God's own people. The prophet Isaiah tells us that we should rejoice when the promised Messiah is coming as our Saviour and Liberator. 
saving us from liberating us from our bondages st paul in the second reading invites us to rejoice always pray without ceasing give thanks in all circumstances in good times and in bad times because christ is faithful and will come again to reward us our gospel tells us the story of john the baptist he was sent from god as a witness to testify to the light the light is jesus coming into the world once again through christmas john has importance because he acts for the coming christ god the son john becomes the voice of whom isaiah spoke the voice crying out in the wilderness make straight the way of the lord when the way of the lord is prepared the landscape is forever altered to prepare the way of jesus john appends his word he calls on everyone to repent this means we must to be transformed while we joyfully wait for the lord then we would be prepared to receive the coming of jesus as students in the story expressed heaven and hell through their facial actions here john the baptist is the, the great advent saint to all of us he can help us to be a witness to the light jesus and there is another example the another advent saint Saint Mother Teresa, she probably called the Sunday as Advent Joy. When someone asked her what was her source of joy to do the work, she replied, "Joy is prayer. Joy is strength. Joy is love. And joy is a net of love." she was a witness to the light jesus dear brothers and sisters advent calls us to transform our landscape to prepare the way for the lord what is each of us doing in our lives when the master returns will he be happy with what he sees we pray that our external and internal preparations for christmas may enlighten to light up our face radiate our smiles revive our hearts so that we rejoice in the lord always and be a witness to christ the light amen friends now let us profess our faith i believe in god the father almighty creator of heaven and earth and in jesus christ his only son our lord who was conceived by the holy spirit born of the virgin mary suffered under pontius pilate was crucified died and was buried he descended into hell On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, 
the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now let us bring our prayers and petitions to our Heavenly Father. For all Christians everywhere in this season of Advent, called to witness to God's love through joyful and practical service in the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish community that each of us might follow the lead of John the Baptist, testifying to the light so that all might believe. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In this year of celebrating the 175th anniversary of our Cathedral Church, St. Catherine of Alexandria, we remember all priests and deacons ordained at our Cathedral and all those serving in our diocese, that Almighty God will reward and bless them for their faithful service. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the healing of those who are ill, especially Brian McRae, Melanie Presti, Connie Porcino, Andrea Aikenhead, Maureen Carner, Tony Batler, and Val Norris. And for those who lovingly care for them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Ramon Rinaldi, Colette Murphy, and Bernice Rich, and for all who are grieving for the loss of a loved one, that they might find comfort in the promise of the resurrection, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer, and for the prayer intentions deep within our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, be your children in faith and confidence brought our prayers and petitions to you. Answer them. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, work of your human hands. It will become for us our spiritual food. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness, we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the wine, work of your human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May, may the Lord, Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and good of all his holy church. May the sacrifice of our worship, Lord, we pray, be offered to you unceasingly, to complete what was begun in sacred mystery and powerfully accomplish for us your saving work through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in the mystery of the Word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind, so that as we recognize in him God made visible, we may be caught up through him in love of things invisible. And so with the angels and archangels, with the thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these caves, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and he entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, and Gerard our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints, Saint Kevin, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glory for you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, 
forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that with the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with the will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of God's peace. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body and bread of Christ is everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. We implore your mercy, Lord, that this divine sustenance may cleanse us of our faults and prepare us for the coming feasts through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with you, sir. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in joy. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Have a wonderful day.